All right, ladies and gentlemen. Well, this is it. We are very close to accomplishing our final major goal for the Bosnian series, and that is to unite the Slavs south, west, and east. And we will form the Empire of Slavia, and I believe that's the best way to, in my opinion, end the Bosnian series in that manner. Even though I'm just, um, again, I'm becoming exhausted. And by the way, on this day of recording, I'm recording it on February 14th. That's Valentine's Day to other parts of the world. But for me, I'm also recording on quite possibly the coldest day in South Texas history, where I come from. Because we're just experiencing, you know, the coldest yet. Perhaps the coldest in my lifetime. And uh, originally I was going to put the recordings on hold and just weather it out and that sort of thing. But seeing I'm the hardest working man in the business. So and i got to provide all this content on a weekly basis unless it kills me. But I know I got sniffles and I don't sound at my best. Which I don't know if it makes a difference. But it's not going to mess my line of thinking. So, this is why we're going to go out in great glory to form the Empire of Slavia to end the Bosnian series after 38 episodes. And I know some of you have already watched the first episode of this uh, Crusader Kings 2 series, which is from the Historical Immersion Project, Prussia. Well, that's going to be the series that basically replaces Bosnia. And once I'm done with the Bosnian series, I will take an extensive break from CK3, and I will not be coming back to Crusader Kings 3 until they release their first DLC. That's when I will return to the game. And subsequently, on this very same week, that's when Imperator Rome Marius and their DLC Heirs of Alexander will come out. As you see my other ongoing series of Thebes, in which that one, well... Not um, finished with that yet, but it's pretty close. So, we're going to end this series here um, after this episode. And, um, well, again, it's been a wild ride in this series. Uh, but I, not only Bosnia is already the greatest series I've ever done in CK3, but perhaps it's probably one of the best ever I've ever done in terms of success. So, come on, let's get this over with. Remember our priorities. Um, we're going to try to fabricate claims. I mean, let me see the claims. I have this, this. Um, these are irrelevant, but we're going to get also the claim in below zero. Yeah. Because that's part of uh, Vespasia. As you can see, the outline of the region of Slavia. That's how much we got left. The entirety of the Chernigov Kingdom in these three areas. Yes, we must obtain all of these, and then that's it. And we will accomplish it in this episode. So it's, this is why I decided I think it's best to record the episode now before tomorrow, after, the day after this recording. And this would also be the day that you people are watching this right now. Or some other day. Or some other week, some other month, some other year. Before, you know, I get sick or something. Which would be the cold. Not anything else. Don't worry about me. I already got myself you know, a shot from weeks prior. I'm going to get a second dose of it uh, later that week. And then I will be immune to that vile, vile disease out there. But this is why I post episodes for other works ahead of time. I always record ahead of time in case of such times such as these. But no time to slack off now. So come on.
for Slavia. Not Yugoslavia, but for Slavia. All of it. So this claim is fabricated, it'll be about five months. So. No doubt that we will be fighting both Vepsia and Finland by then. We'll get Chernigov a bit in a bit. Because you see, we, where is that man? Prince Alexander. Yes, we will get you, um, Chernigov, as long as you stay alive. This time we got others to deal with, starting with Vepsia. It's cheaper that way. the Duke. Got him. 41 days. Hey. Hmm. I was about to ask him to come over here. Friend you, and I'll put you back in your land. Because I don't want to appoint a Bosnian over there. And a Satru, really? They're still around. Of course, they're still around. It's just nobody had the the gumption to deal with. You might interest me. Just in case I've already pushed the claim for Epirus. If I ever feel like it, because, again, I am more concerned about Slavia than anything else. Now, Finland. Take the objective, and then defeat the Finnish army. Mind you, they're a bit large. Not enough to get mercenaries. They're busy with other conflicts, so it should be easy for us. Now I am the diplomat. Well, that definitely helps it. <clears throat> Again, um, ladies and gentlemen. Just um, thinking about, you know, this whole Bosnian series um, as a whole. When I first started that series, I originally thought it's going to be one of the most difficult ever, but no, just luck played the role and, and more. And we were able to, um, you know, go from a Banite to. Um, 
from a star knight to uh, <laughs> a kingdom and to an empire and to an empire of Yugoslavia unofficially. And then we decide to become more than that, then we go into West Slavia and now get all of East Slavia, and then we will form the Empire of Slavia in this very episode. Not to mention this is the same series where we mended the schism and made Christiani the Christian religion. Which is excellent. And There you go. <laughs> Sorry about taking your land and cash. Oh my goodness. He went all the way over there. Now we can never get him back. Well in that case, um any VIP scenes around here? Better question is any Russians around? Yo. Tolstoy. Heck of a name. Sviatoslav Tolstoy. Russian noble. I'm sure some of you Bosnians know any of Toy Story's works. I mean, come on. Bosnians and Russians, you gotta get along. You're Slavs. Don't let your religion or opinions of whoever tell you what to do. You're Slavs. Brotherhood and unity. Come on, Slavia. <laughs> whoever told you otherwise are liars. <laughs> Calm down, Lord Master. It's not like they're, you know, whatever. I mean, we're all Christiani here in this playthrough. There's no Orthodox Russians here. It's a relic of a past. The Finnish army is nowhere to be seen. They've made Little to no attempt. Okay, that's impassable terrain. Go over here then. Just been going through Karalea. Or, um, Karyala in the Finnish language. Heck, like, what do the Bosnians think of Finnish people? They're quite similar, in a way. You know, the whole gusto about it. You know, Sesu, bravery. And Bosnians are brave too. The only difference is Bosnians are mountainous people, Finnish are forced people. That's the only difference. Yeah, what does? Excellent. What's the matter with you? Now, what I'm trying to think of other cultures in the game that are similar to the Bosnians based on circumstances from the beginning. And the things they go through. Back in the old Sogdian series, I've once regarded the Bosnians as being similar to the Sogdians, in a way. You'll get this too. In fact, you're gonna get the whole banner. You serp it. Or create it. There it is.
Heck, I can even think of another Iranian culture that is similar to the Bosnians in a similar situation. The Kurdish. Even though it's like, yep, um, I mean, the only thing that the Kurds and the Bosniaks have in common is that they're both mainly Sunni Muslim, but they follow two different schools of thought. <laughs> There's your, well, whatever, but still, I think that, um... Oh, hold on here, ladies and gentlemen. I know this is in the middle of recording, but I just got a text message that concerns me as a citizen of my homeland. Oh, dear. Um, you know how bad the winter is, and this is why I decided to record this day. They say, um, for the whole... This is a message from the, the electricity grid here in Texas, I Again, I'm just going to say this real quick before we continue on here, of what the relevance is. There's not enough power and not enough generators to generate power from 5 to 9 today. They expect rolling blackouts, so... Well, rolling blackouts may occur um, in the next 4 hours. And this may happen in the middle of recording. And, um... I mean... Look, again, I'm using a laptop. When the power goes off, it's not going to kill off the recording. No, no, no. I'm just going to tell you, it's like, well, um, the power just went out, but uh, come on, we got a show to do. And we'll post it, even though it'll be a bit of a delay, as long as there isn't any rolling blackouts here. Um, which, which concerns me. So, this is why I want to finish this series, because the rest of the week is going to be like that, all right? But freezing temperatures. And I know many of you people, especially you both here, you know strangers of winter, but down here where I come from, <laughs> this winter is the worst one we've ever had. Because it's that cold to us. <laughs> Our normal winters are like, you get down to uh, 32 Fahrenheit. Or 0 Celsius, or whatever you people use, but... But anything, let's just say our wind chills, and I'm using Fahrenheit for reference. I mean, it's kind of too bad that you won't get snowy looks over here, but despite the fact that it's February 8th. I mean, it is around like February. You only have to go up this high to see snow on the ground. Whereas in the old Crusader Kings 2 map, um, you would see snow on the ground uh, during the winter, depending on what part you are from. Well, anyways, stop BSing around and take the final thing that relates to the Seer. Claims cheaper. Well, then you may experience rolling blackouts for the next few days. Because people in my U.S. state of Texas just don't have enough of it. God dang barony. Again, that's not the main reason why we're ending the Bosnian series, because of weather reasons. It's, well, I think a foreign empire saw would be a great final goal. Anything beyond that is just, well, it's going to get repetitive from there. I would just lose my excitement. And tired, and looking forward to do the, uh, you know, this other ongoing series. Uh, with uh, Prussia. Watch, I'll post the second episode later this week. Uh, also, here's another thing, ladies and gentlemen. This is another topic um, that kind of relates to one of the Paradox and Earth games I've played. Just recently, I've been playing a lot of Europa Versalis 4. I mean, I've owned that game since 2013, but I 
never um no bulls you, you since 2017 um since 2017 yes because that's i started playing paradox and i think 2017 with crusader kings 2 and all but anyways reason i never done a video series on eu4 is um i don't have all the dlcs well i do now um, and i've been doing some practice because i'm still kind of green to the game you know greener than goose and um and of course uh whatever gets to us faster come on step up move up bosnia um anyways I was just playing a lot of Iron Man modes, getting a lot of achievements of the e mostly the very easy achievements, because you know, just simply for the sake of it. And uh, what else? Uh, I mean, I don't have any ideas right now for a future EU Force series, um, because there's just so many countries to play, so much potential and all that. But to me, I think that doing an EU4 series would probably just scare me a little. I would feel it, oh, rather intimidated, that's a proper word. Because it's only a massive undertaking of that sort of thing. Switch over to medicine. <laughs> Want to live forever. Um, there we go. Um, that and um, what the heck else? I think winning one battle would do much better. Yes. Or you could just go that way. Can't make up my mind here. Well, again, my current projects. Um, Bosnian series is ending. Prussia uh, CK2 HIP playthrough ongoing. Imperator Rome Thieves, still ongoing, but will soon be wrapping up. And the uh, future Imperator Rome series, haven't decided. Have not decided. I mean, I have an idea of what I would like to do, but it seems a bit of a far-fetched idea, but um, it just depends on the changes that they've made to the game, and I'll figure it out from there. Didn't know you were living there the entire time. Now slow down, alright? Wait for everything to um, recharge. And, uh. And plus, the offensive war opinion is close, so we're gonna take a break from warfare here. There you go. Don't you hold Novgorod as well? Good thing. Don't you know the roads are icy out there? I did not know there was an orthodox holdout up there. Don't oh, no. notice that. Excuse me. side because Croatia isn't too fond of me because I've been out there for so many wars Chernigov will be the last place to take if uh, Prince Alexander is still alive. Get a weak hook on him, so that way he doesn't do anything stupid. Oh crap. I thought we had a rolling blackout for a minute, but instead I just put my hand over my eye. <laughs> I'm so paranoid right now. Calm down, will ya? Another hook. Hey, aren't you the guy who's... Yeah, that I appointed recently. I'm 
trying to think of something else here. As we're wrapping up this Bosnian series here. Not the Paragon of Virtue yet. But if I had my way, um... No, that's too much work. I mean, it would be excellent. Like, what if we had formed the Empire of Slavia and Persia? I mean, heck, if you, some of you long-time subscribers to the Lord Master channel, no, thank you, um, who has seen my, one of my first series with Croatia, the Sanula Tovic series, um, that's what it's called. Which was the, which was a series where um, I became a, from Slavic pagan to briefly Manichaean, and then the rest of the series Zoroastrian, which was a miracle in terms of survival as a Zoroastrian through plagues, through crusade attempts, and spreading the Zoroastrian faith to Russia, survived the Mongol onslaught, came to Persia. And uh, we formed the Persian Empire and a high priesthood, but never able to become associate. But I did become associate in the Sogdian series, which, in my opinion, is the best series of CK2 I've ever done. Because I was far more emotionally invested in that sort of thing than with any other series. But if you're talking about me being emotionally invested in the CK3 series, like which one I was more... I'm kind of divided between Bosnia and the Indian series, the one that came before. Because the Indian series, uh, where I did this thing with the knights, where I made them into special forces squadrons of sorts, where we took out smaller armies just by using shuvias. That's the Indian word for knights. Shuvia. Um, shuvias only. <laughs> and figured they're probably the best warriors in the world, but... I think the Bosnians will have to say something about that with the number of knights and the question is if it's led by a chivalric ruler. But, wait a minute. There goes another one of my rivals. How many do I have? No more rivals. Thank God. We'll get Chernigov in a moment. I'm just stalling for time. Too bad we never fought the Mongols as Bosnia. We would have loved to put up a good fight against them. But, however, in CK3, if you watch my past series, which is a spin-off of Asturias called Bactria, where we, you know, continue to follow the dynasty that made Asturias into the Empire of Hispania, and then expanded through Mesopotamia, Persia, Makran, and even into Sindh, as with the Crusader Kingdom of Sindh, and later expanded up to, um, oh, what are these other places? Expanded up to the Punjab, Kabulistan, and uh, Khorasan, and even parts of other areas like, um, like the Emirates of Balkh, Kotal, Sogd, Orushana, Vargana, and even part of that, to form Bactria. And it was the Empire of Bactria playthrough. Is that the Peasant Revolt? Yeah, Peasant Rebel. From there, Pula, of course. Where we, um, where the Mongol invasion happened and they did invade Bactria and Oh boy, it was a struggle. This is why I this is why I love promoting past series that I've done because as great as this Bosnian series has been, and it is greater than the CK2 Bosnian series, no doubt, in some way, but, but this one's gonna be hard to beat for me. This is why I said that I will be taking an extended break from Crusader Kings 3 because there's just no way that I would replicate the same amount of success as I did with Bosnia. It's going to be hard to do. This is why I will hold it off on doing any more playthroughs in this current version of this current patch 
of CK3, and that's why I won't be coming back to that game until its first DLC is released. And then that's when I will start a new playthrough. Can't decide which, because there are some I would like to do, but... That's just only, well... It depends. On the content, or whatever they're gonna add for relevant regions. Of course, most people would beat me to the punch, but... I have a tendency to play as minority cultures, so don't expect me to play as some big culture, whether if it's Anglo-Saxon, French, Franconian, Russian. Anyway. Oh, oh. Well, guess we may have some changes. <laughs> if I were to choose to continue that series for at least a couple more episodes. <laughs> Do you think it's time? Let me see. That's okay. Yeah, I think it's time, but pick up a perk. Oh, and also we got a Peasant Revolt to deal with, so don't start yet. Well, actually, since it's only a Peasant Revolt that's going to be localized over in Istria, I got an idea, but... No, no, but I got an idea. I know what I'm going to do. <laughs> because I mentioned about the Bosnian Knights and the Indian Shuvirs of their effectiveness. I know what I'm going to do exactly on who to send to fight against these, um, with that peasant revolt. Am I crazy or is Byzantium gain? No, no, no. They did not take Periaslava. You're not crazy. Just wait for it to pop up. Again, it's been half an hour, and I already told you about the future plans of Paradox Interactive video series here on the Lord Master channel. So yeah, that's what to expect. Prussia, last couple of episodes of Thebes, and a future Imperial Rome series, which have not decided what nation or faction that I will be playing as, but I have an idea of one I'd like to do because only because nobody has done it before, and how come nobody's really tried to even attempt that idea? That's just an, an idea for a series. I'm not saying it's like, it's like, oh, how about you play as this and try to make it this? I'm not talking about that. It's more of, it's a matter of government and religion. That's the type of thing. Of, of like, how come nobody's ever tried, you know, this combination? And I'll do a series on that, and see if it's practical or not. Anyways, let's put him down. Here's who we're sending. No, 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 no. What the? Stop that. Okay, so, hold here, stop, now, split off, yes, send in the knights, all of them, all 18 of you, all the bands, kings, princes, barons, anybody, who feels that they're the best fighting men of the Armia and, and they ought to come down in the hills and deal with these battles. You're the commander at night, so you lead the charge. And they say we'll probably win. Watch them put them work. 
I got him, not a chivalrous commander, which they would have fought even more effectively. But we're doing this simply for the sake of it, and... Oh, damn it, that was my marshal. Well, he was 59, and then... He wasn't at his best. And he was a hashish smoker. Because, you know, he was living in Arabia at that time. And that's a common place. Sorry about that. I'll put you in because you want it badly. Now, to Chernigov. This is the moment. Wait one day to get a knight to replace. There we go. Unless you want to delay a little bit further and just invite some more knights, you know, some more effective fighting men. As long as there's no factions that really want me, you know, like that. We accept any good fighting man, regardless of faith and culture. As I said, don't want to do another CK3 series. Um, Anytime soon until the first DLC, because if I do another one, it's going to feel a bit repetitive. <laughs> but, uh, as I said, I will hold it off until the first DLC comes out. Again, it's my decision, because I felt that it's time to move on. And it would be excellent to form the Empire of Slavia as a way of ending the series. Because... I don't think um, anybody, um, I'm sure there's some people who have done playthroughs to try to form the Empire of Slavia. It seems a lot easier to do it if you happen to be playing as Poland or any of the Russian factions. But isn't it wonderful that we would form the Empire of Slavia in this very episode as a Bosnian and Christiani? Which is a combination of one, minority culture which is Bosnian, which is in fact the smallest of Slavic cultures. And two, Christiani faith, which is one of the smallest religions found in the world, in terms of the number of adherents and the counties. Because Christiani, at the very beginning, it only had four counties. Yeah. Went from four counties of Bosnian, four counties of Christiani, and look where we are now with the Christiani faith. Look at it now! Sure, we didn't get to spread it all over the world, but still. Um, and we don't really need to. All we needed was just a mend schism, and that's that. Quiet! I only do feast on my terms. I don't do it for you. I don't want to get fat here. I'm already big enough as it is. And I believe that's all the knights. That's all you got. They could potentially hire mercenaries. So the last Russian holdout, but they are fellow Christiani, but this is for Prince Alexander. Who is my friend who is... He's got a fireproof napkin. That was made using a bestus. That ain't healthy. And he's fought thirst. So he's fought thirst and he's got himself a fireproof napkin. Where does he get a fireproof napkin and where do you find a bestus? I didn't know that exists in that time period. But anyways...
Oh, get the one with a very high vantage first before we switch to Siege Leader. There's the king. If you capture him, we win. So be it. Ladies and gentlemen, particularly to the Slavic-speaking viewers, whether you are from Bosnia, Croatia, Serbia, Sinagora, Montenegro, also known as, Bulgaria, Czech Republic, Slovakia, Poland, Russia, Belarus, wherever all the Slavic peoples are, if all of the Slavic peoples unite, there is no one who could stop us or bring about the mightiest empire the world has ever known. No room for innovations. Obviously, we have the money for it. Found Slavia. For all the Slavic peoples. Hey, Slovene. <laughs> it's Hey, Slavs. It used to be the national anthem of Yugoslavia. But that should also be the anthem of the Slavic Empire. I have done the impossible on this day. All Slavs stand united under one banner. My new empire stretches from the heart of Europe in the west to the frozen tundras in the east. Only a few heroes in history have ever accomplished such a feat. Now that I am one of them, and my name will live on forever. Glory to Slavia. Slavo Slavia. And you got the nickname, the Bogatia. What does that mean, by the way? And what language is that? Because... I mean, again, any of you Slavic speakers, particularly you Bosnian viewers, you probably know this better than I do. Um, even though I consider the Serbo-Croatian or Bosnian-Croatian-Serbian, which is my second language, even though I am not Slavic by blood, it's just I know the knowledge of the region for, oh, 13, 13 years now. Yes, for 13 years. Um, as well as all the other regions that I have full knowledge to. There's Slavia. And look at the coat of arms. No longer there is an empire of Bosnia, but there is a... Well, I guess I'm the empire holder of two. S Slavia and Bosnia. So Bosnia is just in name alone. Unless, but, but you can switch it as primary town if you wish to, but it's rather important to keep it Slavia, because that was the final purpose. Nobody has ever dreamt of a video series here on the Lord Master Channel where I outdid the old Tazalovic series in in many ways. Mending the Schism, uniting Slavia, and all that. Also, uh... Oh yeah, that tiny enclave, that's always been there. Um, 
we'll deal with that um, in a minute. And uh, yeah, nobody could have dreamt that the smallest Christian faith, which later became the majority Christian faith, and the smallest Slavic culture would be the ones to rule Eastern Europe, ruler of all Slavic lands. They all have similar languages, but all tongues have become one, one would think, if everybody started speaking a common Slavic language. Many dialects. But again, it's a, just an idealistic thought of a pan Slavic empire that's been formed here. And do not forget that there's a Baltic minority living there Estonia, Prussia, and uh, Lithuania. Don't forget about all of these. And this is what the cultures inside of Slavia consist of. If you also want to include the Arabic speaking, Bedouin, Masuriki, Egyptians, including Greeks, Italians. So there's Bosnians, Croatians, Serbians, Bulgarians, Mongols, Avars, Slovenes, Bavarians, Czech, Polish, there's even Norse, Norwegians, Prussians, Lithuanians, Latgalids, Estonians, Vespasians, Mordvins, Kazars, Russians, yeah. That's a lot of diversity inside of a Slavic empire, but it's mostly Slavic, culturally wise. Even though Sloven, Polish, and Russian, if you want to be realistic on population numbers, they do outnumber the Bosnians, in a way. Heck, even the Arabs probably outnumber all of them, if you want to be realistic on the census at the time of 1300s. So, it's a heck of a way to that accomplishment, but I gotta fix that little problem. Because, you know, I actually have a claim to it. Where? The far... Oh, that's down there. I don't want that. Down here. Because, you know, I need to become Paragon of Virtue. Forgot they still live all the way down to Yemen. So we got the objective. Mm -hmm. To here. This is why we didn't bring any levies. Trying to be smart here. We can deploy anywhere in the world at rapid succession. Hey, put him here. He's a siege master, he'll know what to do. Taking a capital will do a lot. Maybe we should go to Persia and Khorasan simply for the sake of it. You know, gotta take advantage of, you know, the piety gain that you will get in the war. In fact, let's fight them right now. This is going to help. You're actually going to stand still in this mountain pass? Uh, 
that'll jump up the war score. Here. Because there's another barony. Wash your damn hands. Yes, that's just a reminder for you viewers. Remember to wash your hands and stay safe. Especially on times like these. Well, let's give it a try, shall we? Oh wow, well, I'm an herbalist. Medium boost disease resistance. Again, this is just part of the medicine focus because this is the way that, um... Well, he thinks this is the way that he wants to live forever. I will study the ravages of disease on a corpse. Try to hold my breath as I sive through the tangled mess of slimy swollen entrails sprouting from the corpse's belly, but it is no, no avail. The putrid stench of the case slowly finds way to my lungs, making me gag. Something then tears over the stream of this, this yellowish echo spills all over it off the table. What was that? <laughs> What's the popular opinion over in Rama? The capital of the Slavic Empire? I don't know about this. But it's kind of creepy to hear this. We need to find more bodies somehow. But I'll just say, uh, maybe Samir can help me. Would be much better. She was ecstatic to learn about my newfound interest in Tony. With her help, I significantly deepened my understanding of the human body. I only wish there could be some way to stave off the smell. I'm starting to fear that all this exposure to my ears not, might not be good for my health. Perhaps some flowers could help. Over here. Just one more territory. Thankfully, the proper use of flower patches, incense, and iridation uh, seem to help lessen the effects on that the bad vapors emanated by the cadavers for having on my body. I can finally focus on my sins about the fear of repercussions of my own humoral balance. Nothing stands in the way of knowledge. Iron Constitution now. Should go for this route before we go down this way, all the way. I don't care what people think of me because of these um, offensive wars. Yeah, I did say that you need to go to Persia. Go on a pilgrimage. Oh, perfect. Let's go to the Great Hijra of Jerusalem again. Uh, who desires it? Uh, who holds the kingdom of... Uh, does that not exist? No, it doesn't. thinking you or you I mean doing this to you um again if, if he were to refuse you know that would be criminal we don't persecute minority cultures or other cultures because we're pluralistic we just simply say just convert to the state religion of the Slavic Empire right? either that or just give this kingdom title to him and um It'll be someone else's problem. So he's your problem now. Do what you will. Force vassalization is another. Isn't that part of Persia? Yes. 
You, aren't, you got any claims? No. Just one. Nothing significant. Very well. Take the cheap route. But, Piety, if you want to get Paragon of Virtue, you can use it against that for Coruscant, more than likely. Bring a step closer to Persia. Whoa there! Give him a beating right there. Goes one of our knights. We still take less casualties. Despite all this. They're not going to be fooling around anymore. Place. As I said, they're not screwing around here. Now I'm a paragon of virtue. So it's the last episode of Bosnia, and also the first episode as Slavia. If you want to be realistic. Like, is it really the true end of the Bosnian series? Like, one would think I can go for another hundred years, and now I've gained this Persian ambition now. Because all of a sudden I have this desire to, you know, take Persia. Go actually attack the enemy. You'll get more piety this way. That got him. You are now my vessel. Well, actually, wasn't. He's just not here. You guys Persians? Yes, you are. Well, who lives there? Side the Kozistan. Either that or just go to Fasi. You know, Persia proper. Plenty of places you can, you know, go through. But if you want to grab the title of Persian Empire, you need 77 out of 96. And uh, Khorasan is one of the biggest. Probably. At least on the inside. It looks big. But well, there's other entities that you can go up against.
What kind of claims do you get? That's not... Is for you. Sure. Oh, yeah, forgot to mention on you. Can we only look for geniuses here? Offensive or it's minus 20. Oh, it's a sin of you. Again, it would be a heck of a way to, you know, get there to Persia proper. I mean, if you look at, you know, other religions, other faiths, um, especially extinct ones, like of uh, the uh, Zoroastrian faiths, sure, we don't control any of them because we are not Zoroastrian. Even if you weren't to convert to that faith, you're going to need all of this, which is practically impossible. Why would you want to revive a dead faith? And that everything stands for. I could have sworn I thought Shiraz was one of the holy sites of the Zoroastrian faiths, but maybe in the old version. Yeah, one more. Not that. Fazi. We're going to need a lot, for once. Also... Everybody, for once. We'll start besieging there and just work your way to, to there. Into Shiraz, which... Is it here, or is it here, or is it here? One of these areas. But it's Shiraz in particular. Is where Persepolis once stood. Yes, Persepolis, the once mighty capital of the Achaemenid Empire. I made so much money, so I figured we'll bring everybody for once. The entire bus, no, excuse me, entire Slavic force. Ah, of course. Get this too, then we'll set sail to um, Oman.
but again we have safe connection so once we get Parsa as it was then called back in the olden days the good old days of the Persian Empire An empire that was once admired by many Heck, even the Zoroastrian Empire of Croatia in the old CK2 series, uh, that Croatia, Zoroastrian Croatia, aspired to be like the Achaemenid. That is the largest battle we've ever had in terms of manpower right here. It could have been us versus the Mongols, but it is not. No, we're gonna be still using mercenaries. Retake this position, then sail to here in Iraistan. And I think their capital is still based. No, they're based over here. They used to be based in Gujarat. But we have no desire to go to Gujarat. My heart just catches life stag and its grace and majesty to remind you. Please accept this token of our everlasting friendship. Let her roam in the gardens. A garden stag. That's a first. Hurry up and get in the sea. How many did these guys hire? Or is there really that much out there? Yeah, it's part of that Farzim, you right? You got it. Mandestan. There's another. Let him come. have better younger children than elder children. Oh yeah, it's the forest wolves. Now to Shiraz. Brings back memories, doesn't it? Going back to Shiraz for entirely different reason. This is just for conquest, not liberation, if you, unless if you were a Zoroastrian. So, it's kind of hard to believe, um, for you Bosnian viewers, in case you didn't see the Sogdian Saga. The last time I played a country where where we extended as far as Bosnia was Sogdia, or Persian Empire, and Bosnia was a satrapy to the Persian Empire. And later, be, or in the Bosnian language, Satrapia. <laughs> Same meaning, just <laughs> entirely different reason. Not to mention Zoroastrian. Get down! This is a hostile army. Now about to engage this army, whichever will break off. 
Wait till I approach. One more will do. This will change your mind. You are not the first Persians to be part of the Slavic, Bosnian, Slavic Empire. It's about a sheer cost of refurbishing mosque and falsizing among the peasants. Okay, we'll pay you additional gold. Is it possible to go for... No, that's for Persia. Which we can no doubt usurp it off of them. Like what's next? Yezd? Or here? And the other question is, offensive or opinion? 30. Okay, that one will have to take a break. Especially some people are going to get antsy about this. Unless you want to build structures that will help their popular opinion go up so they don't revolt against us. So yes, now we establish ourselves in Persian land. That's my precision. Yeah, just give it a try. Would it be great if we include the title, uh, kingdom title of Persian Empire? Which is kind of like what we did with the Croatian series, which was an empire of Croatia and Persia. I don't know. I'm going to ask you, ladies and gentlemen. I mean, I did say I wanted to end this series on a high note with um, Slavia. But do you think I should also go for... Persian Empire title, so that way I want to end this series by having what we would call the Persian Slavia um, um, or Slavo Persian Empire or Persian Slavic Empire, whatever you want to call it, <laughs> unofficially. I mean, Slavic will remain as the main primary title. The Empire of Bosnia title is still here, which is just for keeps. And not to mention playing it as a ruler who's going to be living a much longer time. And it's rather unfortunate that he's disfigured. If only we had his good looks still. To know what the fact that he is the emperor of all Slavs. And many other minority cultures. Don't you start. And I know there's Byzantine Empire and it's kind of, I don't know, in the way, but to me, I think I kind of stopped caring about fighting against the Byzantine Empire because they're kind of no longer a priority. Because I have my own ego on controlling lands of Persian Empire. How heroic of you.
And no, I have no desire to take Slavia all the way into India. Just only go as far as Persian Empire. So I think, I think we're just going to set one more goal. So I originally think this was going to be the final episode of Bosnia, but um, I don't know. Maybe a few more. I know it's tempting, and there's this Prussian series still ongoing, which don't worry, I still have a few episodes that's been recorded in advance. It's just I'm really winding down on the series where I'm not going to record too much at the rate of things, but not as much as the amount of messages for ransom has come up. How about you bring me a wolf pelt? I'm a very demanding person. Plus, here's the thing why I don't desire to try to get more territory from the Byzantine Empire. I mean, if I really wanted it to, you know, as in claiming the whole imperial title, I mean, there's easy steps. One, just get a guy who has a claimant to it. And two, don't you know how much prestige is going to cost to claim an imperial title and controlling all this vast territory? Don't you know how much prestige it's going to cost? That's not going to be enough. It'll probably happen in near the end of this character's life. Wouldn't that be vassalization? I don't know. Hey, what do I have against? Say what I mean? That's already too much for this territory. As well as a little few other ones that we may be missing out on. So it's better if you push some guy's claim who happens to have a claim to the title of Byzantine Empire, but conquering the whole thing? Probably not. I mean, maybe all of this, which is the Ajur Imperial Land, but all that is just. So that's what it looks like now. That's why I care about getting Persian Empire, not Byzantine. I mean, at least it's connected. It's what we care about. Connection. As long as there is C, that separates them. And that's fine. It may not look like the best, but it'll do for a time. We'll fight one more war in this episode, which will just be a dutchy one, and we'll have a claim on the next. Again, I, I, mean, I know I hyped it being so it's fine, I'm so, but it's getting to me. You know that say, you know that quote from one of the movies, one of those American movies, where it's just. Thought I was out. Thanks. Thought I was out, but they pull me back in. Yep, they pull me back in because I can't resist seeing the title of Persian Empire. And it was the Sogdian series is the last time we held that title, along with the Empire of Turan title. But we'll be willing to go as far as Persian Empire, and nothing more beyond that. It's all the started from there, and I have no desire to go to India because we already did in. Indian series that that covers taking all the imperial titles of India and then you form India. I don't think the war is going to be that lengthy, so yeah, let's do it. Yeah, I'm in very good health. Not fine, but good. 
we'll start the war right after I pick up this perk. So that means in two years, four years, six years, eight years. So by 58, he's going to be very healthy, and it may be entirely possible he could live up to 90. The longest live ruler I ever played in this game was from my first series, Asturias, where I had my guide live up to the age of 92. But unfortunately, he could have possibly lived a little bit longer if he had not had obesity and also imprisoned by the enemy. So, we may never know how much longer he could have lived. This is also partly the reason why I said I kind of want to do a couple more episodes, because I want to see how long will this character live? The man who founded the Slavic Empire, who thinks he should be living in an eternity. <laughs> That's his ego talking. Okay. Let's get the Ben, the, Amir, the Emirate of Kirman. That's going to be the next one. And after that, we'll we'll stop this episode here. And this does not mean the end of the, the Bosnia series in general. No. Apparently not. Because <laughs> I know when I first announced it, some of you were probably disappointed. And I could have done more. You know what? I could do a little more. It's like an addiction. One would think. So it's going to be another huge war. So we're going to have to bring everybody again. Oh, hell. Hurry up. He's got to be in one of these armies. Amir Miran, yeah, he's there. Come on, faster. We need to catch him in the battle. I want to give him constructive advice on how to act better. This is where you will meet your end. There's a lot of us coming. Guess we're taking severe casualties, but reinforcements will be coming and they'll be outnumbered sooner or later. Because we're that mad. Definitely religious icon. Huge devotion gain. And yet it all took place. Remember I talked about Zoroastrianism earlier? Yezd was one of the last areas where Zoroastrianism was very prominent. And there's still a small number of Iranian Zoroastrians living there today. In, uh, where is it? In... There's a place called Chak Chak. There's a population of Zoroastrians still living there. Don't worry, they're well protected. What do. Uh, again, <laughs> it's another question. No, no, no. Save it. The objective's over there.
Let's take all the relevant objective areas. Yeah. A middle of nightly ritual in the honor of a horned god when the sun annoys me. A burglar, a visitor, an assassin. As I twist around, I find myself face to face with my steward, King Budinir, dressed up in dark cloak adorned by the unmistakable mark of the horned god. A classic outfit for conversions. There's no need of that with me, brother. Company of Bokhara from Grand Amirate Khorasan. That's the enemy exactly. Just what we're looking for. Yes, Bokhara. The, the city where the Sogdian series began. <laughs> Especially with Roxana of Bokhara. Legendary hero. Legendary hero of the Kayanian dynasty. Love making past references. Don't need to be a soulmate, I'm fine. There we go. Prove encouragement. <sighs> boy, oh boy. Now we take bomb. And after that, Sir John. And that's it. And then maybe when we continue with the Bosnian series just for a few more episodes we'll get to the route of forming the Persian Empire just to, you know, complement the Slavic Empire. So yes, a Slavic and Iranian Empire. Slavia and Iran share become one. That's a dream that I wanted to achieve before we end that series. Officially. And earlier I mentioned about this weather. So don't expect me to post too many episodes of Bosnia for this week. It's just going to be this one for this week. Because weather circumstances here and it may disrupt recording um, schedule. Including for my other episodes like Thebes. As well as Prussia which I'll schedule a few. Like while well, posting another one this week. We have to win one more battle because these bastards are going to get it. Yes, I know we're starving out, but I really want to defeat them at this point. There's only that many of us in. Versus this many of them. God dang it, they have a holy warrior. But it is no matter. Took a bit longer than that. Now, for goodness sakes, stop right there. So, as I said, the Bosnian series will not end officially until I acquire the Persian Empire. That's one more ambition that I'm willing to go for. So, that means we'll have to fight them, too, in the meantime. Uh, but... This will be the only episode I'll be posted for this week. We'll be back next week with a continuation of the Bosnian series, which I'm going to give it a few more episodes, and then I will officially end it. 
two reasons. Persian Empire and I really want this man to live longer. See if he can live past 92, which is an old record of mine. I just want to you know, set records in this series. So we hope for the best for Slavia. We hope you return, ladies and gentlemen. And I hope that... Just hope that the cult doesn't get to me first, alright? Before the end of this series. So, we'll hope to see you next time, God willing. But until then, so long for now.